Today, I'm gonna to talk about a technique that I would say is one of photography's best kept secrets. Have you ever seen an image that really catches your eye, but you can't quite put your finger on how the photographer did it? You might think to yourself, why can't I ever get to those locations at that optimal time? Why do I never get the light looking exactly like that? And I know as a beginner, I always thought that maybe buying new lenses or buying new filters or a new camera would help me achieve those results. But there are a few techniques that don't really get spoken about all that much in photography. And this is one of them. This is time blending. So I've set myself up here at Scotsman's Hill in Calgary with a really nice view overlooking the city. Now city shots work really well for this technique because the light's coming on later on in the night. But the first thing you're gonna need is a really solid tripod because once you've set up your composition, that's where you're gonna be leaving it for the next two or three hours. So you can just about see the composition that I'm going for here on the back of the camera. You can see I've left quite a lot of sky at the top here. That's because there is some kind of thin light cloud in the sky tonight. And I'm hoping that that will just capture the little bit of color as the night goes on. But throughout the night, I'll be taking multiple exposures of light hitting different buildings in the city and hopefully the clouds changing as well as the lights coming on. So I did make a point of getting here a little bit earlier this evening. Uh, the sun sets at the moment at about 6.15, but I actually arrived an hour before that. And the reason for that is the longer period of time you can spread out your images over, the more flexible you're going to be in your edit. So earlier on in the evening, I was taking pictures of golden light kind of coming through and illuminating different parts of different buildings. And I'll probably wait for another half an hour after sunset until it's completely dark to get all the lights on in the city. So when I get back to my computer, I'm going to have lots of different options to choose from and I can decide what sections I'm going to use in what parts of the image. You can see now that we are getting a little bit of colour in the sky. Unfortunately, it's a little bit away from the city skyline and there's even some nice pinks up here behind me. But I am capturing all of that at the moment with the time blend. So I'm just going to take as many images as I can until it's complete darkness. I suppose one thing with these time blending images, it really is one big waiting game. I suppose one of the risks with shooting like this is that you have to choose your composition so early on in the evening and then you, you can't move it. So now the sun is kind of nicer over there. There's better light and better color that way, but it's too late for me to say move across the city or move around the uh, ridge here to kind of shoot back that way because I've set up this composition for the night. But I think the effect is worth it. So I think one of the hardest things about this technique, especially here in Canada, when it gets pretty cold coming into winter, is actually having the commitment to wait long enough for proper darkness and for the lights to come on properly in a city or a town. But it's about 40 to 50 minutes after sunset now, and you can see behind me the lights are on, so I think I do have everything I need. So now, just to put it all together. So in the end last night, I ended up taking about 53 images altogether, and I've loaded those all up into Lightroom, had a bit of a look through, and I've selected kind of the best three or four that I think will work for this time blend that I'm trying to put together. And the first step is just to give them all a little bit of an edit and make sure they kind of look consistent. So the photos that I've chosen are a couple from earlier on in the day where I've got a bit of light kind of on the trees in the front here, as well as on the buildings themselves. And then I've just chosen this second one so that I will blend out this kind of glare between the two buildings and I'll use this one to cover that up. I've got one later on where I can see there is a little bit of pink and blue in the sky as well and a little bit of goldenness. And then much later on in the night we've got one with all the lights on. So those are the four images I'm going to use to blend together to make the final result. Once you're happy with your edits in Lightroom, you can simply select the images that you want to send over to Photoshop, right click them, 
and then choose edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. So these can all be layers because we're going to be blending them together. So as you can see now, it's loaded that all into layers into Photoshop here, and we have each one on top of the other. With all these layers in Photoshop, there are several ways to blend them together. One of the easier ways is to use the layer blend modes. First, I'll make sure the layer with the bright lights is on the top, then below that, I'm going to drag the image with the nicest sky below. In this instance, I don't need the two layers below that, so I'm going to turn these off. Now, with the top layer selected, I'll go to the Blend Mode drop-down menu and select Lighten. And as you can see, only the lighter sections of this layer are now visible. However, I also want to blend in some of the golden light from the other images. So I'm going to do some more manual masking. I'll add a mask to this second layer and use Photoshop's Select Sky feature. I'm then actually going to invert this mask using Shift, Command and I on the Mac keyboard. And then using a black brush, I'm going to reveal the layer below. Now, if I turn these layers on and off, you can see how each one of the three layers makes up the final image. However, I don't want that big sun flare in there, so I'm going to adapt the mask a bit to get rid of it. And after I'm done with that, I'm going to do a quick clean up, just getting rid of all of those dust spots. And then I'm going to get rid of the lens flare from this lamppost in the bottom right hand corner. And a few little more tweaks. Here's the final image. And there we have it. That is the result of my time blend from last night. I'm actually pretty happy with how that turned out. So do let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if you found this video useful and would like to see more of it in the future. But as always, no, thank you so much for watching and please do subscribe. I'll be making a few more of this style of video soon enough. Hopefully I'll see you on the next one.